Item number three is a resolution to approve permit number 937 the Space Exploration Technologies Corporation to construct and operate a research design and manufacturing facility. Mr. Michael DiBernardo is here with us to discuss. Good morning, Commissioners. My name is Mike DiBernardo, Deputy Executive Director of uh, Marketing and Customer Relations. Congratulations and welcome to the board of this uh, great port, Commissioner Lee. Thank you. I'd like to present to you today the request for approval for Permit 937 with SpaceX. So I want to give you a little bit of uh, background of this area that we plan to lease out. In late 2015, we were approached by SpaceX for some land to build rockets. And the rockets were going to be very large, which would not allow them to move them uh, th the traditional way, which is by truck to their launch pad. Therefore, they needed property with water access. They were looking at properties in Southern California, close to their engineering team in Hawthorne, and out of state, such as Texas, Louisiana, and Florida. We identified a 19-acre parcel that was sitting fallow since 2005 that once homed the Southwest Marine Shipyard. The area had levels of contamination from this past tenant, and we had no interest from other prospects. SpaceX found the area to be perfect for their future manufacturing opportunities. In mid-2016, we began the necessary environmental remediation of the property, and by the end of 2017, the remediation was completed. This last October, we initiated a term sheet with SpaceX, and we began the CEQA process. In March 2018, CEQA was approved by this board, and we concluded a new permit with SpaceX. And today, we bring that permit to you for consideration. At this point, I'd like to give you the mechanics of this permit. The initial term is 10 years with options for two additional 10-year extensions for a total of 30 years. Those ex ex extensions have a fee associated with each, with each of them. There will be two phases. One phase is for almost 11 acres and in, that includes wharf upgrades, backland improvements that include an 80,000 square foot building, large enough to build spacecrafts, and a wharf area to allow them to transport the finished spacecraft by water to the launch pad. As I mentioned, the planned rocket is too large to transport by road, therefore the need for water transportation to the launch pad. The second phase will include additional eight acres with additional backland improvements and a 120,000 square foot building. The tenant will pay all CEQA, maintenance, and repair, repair cost. The tenant will be required to pay prevailing wages, and the tenant is in discussion with different trade groups in regards to the construction. SpaceX is privately funding this project with no public subsidies. Mike, just a point of clarification. I'm sorry. This is for launch vehicle development, right? I know you said spacecraft, but yes, this is for a launch vehicle. Yes. Okay. Correct. Thanks. In terms of compensation, SpaceX will pay $1.38 million a year with CPI escalators each year. Per the city charter, we'll continue to do the five-year compensation review. And as the tenant makes improvements, they'll be entitled to rec credits to their improvements. In phase one, they'll receive up to $27 million in credits, and they will need to demonstrate that those expenses have been incurred by submitting actual paid invoices to the city. In phase two, they'll receive up to $15 million in credit. In total, they build both, if they build out both phases, they will receive $42 million in rent credit over the first 20 years. If more environmental contamination is found during construction, SpaceX will receive an additional 5% in credit or $2.1 million for a total of $44.1 million in credit. By, year 21, by the year 21, SpaceX credits will be exhausted and the port will see revenue in years 21 through 30. After the end of the term of the 30 years, the premises with improvements will revert back to the port. With that reversion, the rate of return is estimated to be at 6.75%. Although this is below our rate of return policy of 10% on land and 12% on improvements, the attractive part is that this port is able to fill a vacant property that has been fallow since 2005 that included a much needed restoration and development, and the project will generate up to 700 technical jobs. Therefore, we recommend to the board the following. First is the CEQA, which you've already approved in March, but it is required to be approved again. Find the best interest to the city and L.A. Harbor Department based on a lower than port's rate of return policy. And the, since the property was vacant for since 2005 and no interest from anyone else, had contamination that required cleanup 
and SpaceX will provide up to 700 new technical jobs to the port, which will enhance economic growth for the region and align with our vision to create innovative, high-tech jobs to the LA waterfront. I therefore ask for you to approve Permit 937 with SpaceX. I'd like to thank a few folks who were involved in this project, Regner Globus, Jack Hedge from our real estate team, Chris Bobel from City Attorney's Office, Chris Cannon and his environmental team, the SpaceX team, which included Bruce McHugh, Lillian, and all for their hard work on this project. This time we'd be happy to answer any questions that you may have. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Um, we will take speaker cards on this item, beginning with Ann Carpenter. Good morning, Commissioners. Jean. My name is Ann Carpenter. I'm CEO of Braid Theory, a strategic consulting firm here in San Pedro. First of all, thank you to the port staff for working so hard, so diligently to bring SpaceX to the harbor. One week ago today at Brewery West Crafted Complex, our company held a technology expo called Ignite 22, celebrating innovations that will shape the 22nd century. The event featured 50 technology companies, more than 300 entrepreneurs, investors, engineers, research scientists, and industry professionals. We too are betting on the future for this harbor region to be the hub of scientific discovery and technology development and commercialization. I'm here today to ask SpaceX to be an integral part of our harbor communities of Wilmington and San Pedro hire our residences, subcontract to our area businesses, get involved with the students of our schools and nonprofits like the Los Angeles Maritime Institute, the International Trade Education Programs, and the Boys and Girls Clubs. Join our chambers, move here, eat here, shop here. Treat your facility here like an extension of your headquarters, not a remote outpost. Invest in our harbor communities. It's worth it. Thank you. Thank you. Ernesto Medrano. Good morning, uh, Madam President, members of the board, executive staff. My name is Ernesto Medrano, and I'm with the Los Angeles and Orange Counties Building and Construction Trades Council. I represent over 140,000 hardworking men and women in the construction industry. And uh, first, I want to thank you for extending our project labor agreement about a year ago, I believe it was. We're doing performing work for all of the uh, construction that's going on in here, and we think that's a very positive thing. Uh, with that said, I'm extremely excited to see that the uh, SpaceX project is coming in, that you're working close with SpaceX, because aerospace was the economic engine of Southern California. I remember the years I worked for the International Association of Machinists many years ago, and I remember in 1991 when it, the bottom fell off in that industry, and many people lost their homes. It was a very difficult time. And so I was excited to see a company that has high-wage, high-skilled uh, industry coming in back to Southern California. And I'm also hopeful to enter discussions uh, with SpaceX uh, so we can reach a partnership agreement as the one like that we have with the port. Our partnership agreements, as very well you were, are very well familiar with, provide for a no-strike, no-lockout. Therefore, there's efficiency and no interruption in the work. It also provides for a skilled and trained workforce. We have the best trained journey-level folks in the business in, in, in North America. <clears throat> and we're also providing for opportunities for our young people. Everybody's not going to go to college, but we can provide a career path that provides for good wages, good benefits, a good career with a defined benefit plan for young men and women in the Los Angeles area. Furthermore, I also want to highlight, and I left it for the very last, is our local hire. It is one of the best uh, community benefits that we can provide is our local hire that provides for veteran preferences. We have our Helmets to Hard Hats program. We have a strong, strong program to recruit from the community uh, and have, provide for direct access for veterans that have come out of the military to come in and have a career in the construction sector. So with that said, congratulations on that. I, I'm hopeful that we can enter into an agreement with SpaceX, and we'll be having some dialogue and reporting back in the future. Thank you very much. Thank you. Mike Kovchak. Good morning, Madam Chair, distinguished commissioners, 
My name is Sergeant Major Mike Kufjack. I'm the former Sergeant Major of the 1st Marine Division located down at Camp Pendleton, California. And I currently work and reside here within Los Angeles County. Uh, I am the Director of Veterans Affairs for the International Brotherhood of, uh, of Electrical Workers, Local Union 11, which governs Los Angeles County. And as we just heard our, uh, our distinguished friend Ernesto uh, state, uh, we represent apprenticeship throughout Los Angeles County. Uh, just getting to the facts of things, California alone is home to some 1.8 million veterans alone, with Los Angeles County home of some 325,000 veterans, with an aggregate of about 12,000 veterans returning to Los Angeles County uh, a year. Apprenticeship, because we stand in support of this project, apprenticeship allows us to help eviscerate this veteran homelessness and homelessness throughout Los Angeles County. But moreover, more importantly, we are recruiting these men and women directly from the armed forces, directly into the construction trades. Local Union 11 is probably one of the largest electrical uh, training institutes within the continental United States or apprenticeship training programs within the uh, United States. We're currently cresting probably by year's end about 2,000 apprentices located at Net Zero Plus Electrical Training Institute in Commerce, California. So we are certainly doing our part as being one of the largest veteran employers here within uh, Los Angeles County, and we currently are cresting some 300 veterans in our program right now. So this is uh, not only great for the port, but moreover, more importantly, it's great for our returning service members who come from a very regimented life who are joining a regimented skilled trade uh, to participate in our community and integrate right back into our society and our community. And again, as I stated, we stand in support of SpaceX, but moreover, more importantly, we want to ensure that it's also blanketed under uh, the port's master PLA as well, too. Thank you very much. Tommy Fave. Good morning. Uh, congratulations, Jamie Lee, Commissioner, um, and welcome to the Port of L.A. Um, fellow commissioners, uh, port staff, Gene, always good to see you, um, and our, our apprentices and uh, journey level that's behind me. Um, this is what you get every time when we have an important project that's in front of the board all the time. Uh, so I know you just got onto the board, uh, and you know they're a big fan of yours today so <laughs> so um but I, what I wanted to share with the board uh and the staff and the public today is that um and what the prior speaker spoke about was the project labor agreement that's in place here at the port um it was adopted back in 2007 uh it's been in place since then it was just renewed last year and it's and it's going to go on for a 10 year agreement um so we're here to stay, we're here to build projects like uh, SpaceX, but on top of the construction, and we, we understand how construction works, but we wanna talk about the permanent jobs that follows the construction and the careers that's gonna happen in SpaceX. And we're talking about 30 years that potentially SpaceX could be here at the port. That's 30 years of having a good career. We get it, it's high technology careers. Um, we, we, we understand that. Manufacturing uh, in Los Angeles has always been number one in the whole U.S., we, and we understand that. But we want to make sure that the permanent jobs are represented as well. And we hope to, uh, you know, um, coordinate that and, and discuss that with, uh, with SpaceX in the near future. Uh, but we're here as well to support the construction uh, jobs, but at the same time, local hire. A lot of our members that's here today, they, here, they live here locally. They want to invest here in San Pedro and the surrounding communities so they can live here and grow here. Thank you. Thank you. That's all of our public, our, our speaker cards. So we'll move to questions from the commissioners. Uh, do, we, do we have a representative from SpaceX here? <clears throat> uh, yes, we do. Bruce McHugh is here from SpaceX. So I think I have a question for him. <clears throat> Good morning. I'm Bruce McHugh from SpaceX. Yeah, a couple questions. Of, uh, ju just first, uh, of all the votes uh, you have to take on a commission, this is probably one of the most important ones because uh, in the Port of L.A., uh, since Gene's been here, we have a philosophy of investing in what we call human capital, mm -hmm. you know, trying to address the question of... Uh, middle-class standard of living. It's a, it's a union town, a union area. And we've been very successful at that. And uh, 
So when we see this project come in and we see this as a very positive thing for the, the Port of LA, for the community in general. So I'll, I just wanted to start off with that. So I think it's important to uh, maybe, because I'm not too familiar other than Perosi here, Commissioner Perosi he understands all about this industry because that's what he does. But maybe you can give me a little bit of background, phase by phase, how you see the involvement of this project, you know, and how many workers, not specifically, but in okay. general, what type of workers and how it evolves. Okay. We may take a little bit of time on this, but I think it's necessary. Yeah, and I understand that. We, I think one of the things you have to look at is our past. You have to look at Hawthorne. Mm -hmm. We came into Hawthorne, and it was blighted. Cheap rent. We got a lot of buildings. And you look at Hawthorne now, there's two new breweries going in there. There's a big uh, residential development that's going to be going across the street. 20 to 30 percent of our kids that work for us live in Hawthorne. We're very much part of the community of what we've done. Rates, rents have gone up because of us. It's called the SpaceX effect. And the, the vacancy rate in Hawthorne right now is 2 percent or less. So when it, Elon said, find me something near the ocean for what we're going to do, I drove all around the place. And I found this property, and I looked at it. And you, you know, you have to look at everything. You look around. Where could people live? Where could people eat? How did they get here? How do we commute here? We look at all that, and that was like the perfect spot for us. So then, what we had to study is we don't know exactly what we're building, but we know it's big, and we know it can't be trucked. So. That's why this spot is big enough land near the water, and we know we could produce our product there. So the first aspect of this project, of course, is our lease negotiations, and then we're going to go into the building phase of this project. It's an 80,000-foot building that's 80 feet tall with no columns on the inside of the building. It's a big hangar. And when we add on to it, it'll, be, it'll wind up being a total of a 200,000-square-foot building, assuming... Everything works out for us. We are building a ship that has never been built before. We are doing research and technology that's never been done. We're trying to come up with it. So once we get the building built, we, uh, we, and, in this, and we're also doing this in a parallel path, we are working on the me means and methods of how we're going to build this, this product. And so far it's going to be a composite-type rocket, we think. Am I allowed to say that? I don't <laughs> say that. I wasn't sure. I wasn't sure because most rockets are, are metal. But so far, it's a composite rocket. So we have, currently, we probably have 20 engineers designing and 20 production guys trying to figure out how to build it. So that's where we are right now. And by the time we get the building built in a year, we'll know the method that we're going to do. So then we're going to bring on more engineers, so it'll be very engineer-heavy in the beginning. We'll have uh, technicians that will be doing the actual layup work. We build a big tool, a big metal tool, a big stainless steel tool that gets wrapped in composite materials. And there'll be workers that have to do that, technicians that will be doing that. And in the early stages, I would think it would probably be 80%, 90% engineers and production engineers and fabricating engineers, and it will probably be maybe 20% labor putting the thing together. As we get our processes down, our engineering will, of course, start to go down, and our technical workers will start to go up. We came up with 700 people. When we think we're in full, full growth of this, which could be you know, three to five years, Elon wants it, like, way faster, but it's three to five, I think, three to five years. We figured that this place would be a very... It would, we would be doing all the production here, and we would probably be more, you know, maybe 60% engineering, 30%, uh, 40% either technical production people and staff that supports the whole process. Okay. Uh, I'm just going to ask a few questions and let others ask, and then I'll come back to you on some other stuff. Um, my biggest concern, to, to be truthful, is uh, over the last four or five years, and probably one of the reasons I'm on the commission, 
is we've tried in this port to create peace between labor and management, and as a result of that, our efficiencies have really grown, mm -hmm. and that's important, and we want to continue to do that. And I think that's important, you know, for this project. So, you know, you've heard from labor here, mm -hmm. and I'm a, I'm going to ask you the direct question. Uh, are are you willing to sit down with these guys and try to work out an understanding around uh, the PLA that they're talking about? Is your company willing to do that? Well, yeah, we're definitely willing to talk about that. Uh, I know I'm I'm a construction guy. I know, but and you're I, the only guy here from uh, SpaceX. <laughs> So yeah. you got to answer this question, uh, and I'll ask, and I and I understand it too, and I understand that. I know I can tell you that during construction it will be a union project, because it's a big project, and I know you can't get small little union non-union guys to build a big project. I know that the training that the union does is is there, so I can I know I can build my project. So I can tell you the construction will be union. Once we go into production and fabrication of the rocket, two three years from now. We'll have technicians. Uh, we'll have to. We'll have to discuss that. Our our employees. Just so that you know, we have six thousand employees. Our median age is around thirty one years old. We pay above market on everybody that we have because for two reasons. Number one, to attract the best talent that's out there, you got to pay them a little bit more. And we have the best talent. We feel we have the best talent. So our technicians all make very good money, and so do the engineers. I'll, I got other questions, but I want okay. to allow the other commissioners no, to can... ask questions. Thank you, Connie. Yeah, you no, can. Go ahead. So let's see. Um, <laughs> no, I, I'm. Uh, you know, I've been in the industry for 28 years, so I'm excited to see uh, see aerospace coming to the uh, waterfront. You know, it's been uh, for over 10 years a dream of mine to see how would aerospace ever get down to our port. Um, so seeing this come to fruition is very exciting. Um, to be clear, though, again, this big facility is for launch vehicle development, not drag-in or anything else. It's just for this big rocket you're building. Is that correct, or will there be a combination, or is there a future vision for, let's just say, more products? That's a hard question to answer. Okay. Because, um, you know, whoever thought we'd be doing Hyperloop? We got a Hyperloop tube down our street. Yeah. Whoever thought we'd be boring a hole to Bel Air? Right. We're boring a hole. Whoever thought we'd have AI? It's just, we just don't know. But there's just so much innovation and energy that when we co something comes up, it might be here. We might come up with something that we might want to do here. But for now, we know this is the perfect spot to build our, our big rocket. And then as far as the, um, the ship or the tool that you're going to take it out of here, um, are, are you set on the size? It's going. You said it's going to be big. It's it's big. It's big. Our 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 F our F nine rocket is twelve feet in diameter, mm -hmm. so we could put it on a truck and we could drive it right. to Texas. This thing is going to be plus plus or minus thirty five feet in diameter, and so it would be built. It would and then we'd put it on one of our barges, and we'd float it down through the Panama Canal Got over it. to our to, to the Cape. Okay, and then just to, just to add on to uh, Dave's question about working with the team on a, it's, it's great to hear you saying you want to use um, union, the union to build a facility, and then you're going to sit down and look at what the future holds for barging this thing out and, and leveraging the local um, workforce to support that. Is that, is that where you? Yeah, we, we're definitely, I can't speak for that because I'm not that guy, but I can definitely speak for con construction. It'll be union. After that point, it'll be talking with our production groups, our legal teams. How, I don't know how we do our, our barge work now. I'm assuming we follow all the rules with our barging that right. we do now. Understand. So I would assume we would continue to do that. The other thing I think it was Ann Lee Carpenter talked about being part of the, the community. So we're, you know, we're redeveloping our waterfront. Mm -hmm. And so uh, how do you envision you know, – the employees, once this is built, because three years is going to come quick at three to five. I think you're going to have it done before. No, I mean, I just can, with Elon on you guys about getting done, I have a feeling you're going to accelerate. But how do you see engagement into um, what we're trying to do on, our, on this side of the water uh, from supporting local business, the public market, and things of that nature? Do you see a path where, um, you know, employees may 
park on this side of the water and, and water taxi them over to the other side? Have you thought about that? Is that in dollar? But that, those are the kind of things I think Ann and others are really, really thinking about. How do we promote the local areas of Wilmington, the Harbor area, in, in, you know, in San Pedro, and the, you know, all those different elements? Because everyone is excited about it, I believe, but really understanding how you're going to do here what you did in Hawthorne, because I'm not far from you, and I've seen it. Yeah. I've been there, so I, it's exciting. So I'm just wondering where that element of this development is in, in the thought process. Okay, so when I was driving around, because I, fi- I find sites for us. Number one, where, where, where's the site? Number two, where do they park? Where do they eat? Where do they drink? Where do they live? In that order. So, I mean, there's incredible places like right here where they can come and eat. They can live on this hill here, and it's relatively, compared to where other spots, it's more affordable for them to get in. Um, our, we have a lot of young kids. They live together, roommates mm-hmm. and things like that. So I saw there was a housing here. I saw there's restaurants here. I saw there's bars here. <laughs> have you, have you gone on a tour with any locals to show you where the, the, all the real bars are or not? Or? <laughs> You're not going to want us there. I, I, I mean, we are... We, I sometimes say we're not the best neighbors because we hit a bar and there's 5,000 of us. And it's, I, I call up places and I, I just say, say, this is Pedro. We might hit hard back. I'm just saying. <laughs> <laughs> you'll, you'll love us, but we need to give you a warning that we're going to show up. Good. We want you to. Yeah. yeah. We we, you if, to. if we had parking on this side and if there was some kind of parking area here and there was a boat that went over, that would be perfect because yeah. most of the kids will live like right here okay. on the side. That's what we want to hear. Yeah. No, we would definitely do that. We're, like I said, we're building a little, not us, but a developer came to us and said he wanted to build some units across the street. That will be filled with our kids. They will all live there. And 30% of them live within, you know, a couple miles of the, of the operation. Okay. It's encouraging. Put, it is okay. encouraging. And one other thing is when we were really looking for production people, it's super hard. There's not a bunch. We hung up big banners around SpaceX. And we said, come into SpaceX and interview. If you can show up to work and not be on drugs, we can train you. And that's hard to find. I hate to say it, but it's hard to find. But we put these big banners out there. So we wanted, we wanted the local people here. So, yeah. All right. Yeah, I'm excited for this. This is, this yeah, is we great. Yeah. We'll help you hang the banners. Perfect. <laughs> Perfect. No, I'm not. I'm good. All right, go ahead, Dave. Okay. Yeah, just to get back to a couple of things, um, you know, and I'll ask Mike some of these questions. Uh, but you know, when I when I look at this business deal, and I'm not the business guy here, this guy is. I say to myself, boy, what are we getting out of this? You know, and what I see us getting out of it, and while I can defend it, is we have a social responsibility, and to help put people to work. I could defend giving away property for free based on the improvements you're making and so forth. I can defend that, you know. Uh, my background on the waterfront is we would never do this with one of our other employers because that's where we make our money. We're not going to make any money out of this. So, you know, there's a downside to that. But at the same time, what I'm telling you and what I say to SpaceX and to the public is putting those people to work. And if what you say is true, and I got to believe what you say is true, and Perosi could probably back it up, that the people that are going to be coming to work here are going to make comparable wages are better than what they make at your place, which is basically a union uh, union shop. Our assemblers are, yes. Engineers are not. Okay. But uh, those are pretty much questions. I got some questions for Mike, but thank you uh, for answering the questions. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Bruce. Yes, Commissioner. Um, as, as this project develops, um, the way I understand the business component to it, you know, you laid out how much it would cost per year and all that, and then it's offset with rent, rent credit. Is that basically what we're saying? With that is correct, agreement? yes. As they do improvements, they will um, share their bills with us and their invoices that they've actually paid towards the construction of the facility, and those would be issued back in credits. In terms of um, 
any further liability. You raise something in there about if there was further contamination, there's a limit to our cost? Yes, we... On any type we, of contamination? We've cleaned up the property to the best of our ability right. today. And as you do construction and do footings and so forth, they may run into some other things. So that's why there is that cap of 5% or $2.1 million additional if they are and that's it. in there. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's the cap. Okay. Um, just to clarify, uh, project labor agreement that we have is because when we do construction, we sign off on a project labor agreement because the port controls that construction. Here, SpaceX is doing the construction. So we really don't have that relationship. That is correct. Is that correct? That is correct. So obviously what we're asking, I know I think as a commission, probably as a whole, and I can't speak for the other commissioners, but both me and Commissioner Perosi have already stated it, we hope that a PLA or something similar can be negotiated between the building and trades and others. Because when you go to the building and trades, Southwest uh, Carpenters, and you look at their training center, and you go to the IBW, you look at their training center, that's what used to be done in the schools. Mm -hmm. They don't do that anymore. Now it's a labor movement that has to provide skilled labor. So I just hope that SpaceX uh, looks at that. And my last statement is, I got friends that work in the uh, auto plant in Fremont, and there's a big labor struggle going on there. Musk won't make any concessions there, and I got a big problem with that, and I just don't want to see that coming into this port. And that's just where I'm coming from. So understand. I know uh, the representative uh, for, from uh, SpaceX, this is not his field, but you can take back where we're coming from. This is a labor town. Well, thank you, Mike. <clears throat> the other thing, if I, if I may add as well, we do, have a, we do have a water tax company here in San Pedro, so we'll be mm -hmm. reaching out to them to make sure that they're prepared for when this labor force comes on to make sure that they transport the folks across the, the harbor and bring them to our waterfront. Thank you. Just want to make some closing comments on that. Did you, did Before you close. Go ahead. I, I'm sorry. I, yeah, I, I was just going on that same line, and you asked the question better than I did, so I just want clarification. So... On our behalf, I mean, we, we own the land. We're about to lease it for potentially 30 years. Correct. And we cannot require, or can we, that there be a project labor agreement? It could have been negotiated, but we can't require it. There would be a negotiated term. And that was not negotiated? We didn't make that a part of it? That was discussed. Regner Globus here from uh, Real Estate. Yeah, that was discussed. And uh, on, the, on the permit itself, it has prevailing wage in there, which is uh, union rates. So uh, for them to go non-union is not, uh, you know, it, it doesn't make any sense. So we, we put in there the prevailing wage requirement. Yeah, but there's a difference between prevailing wage and a project labor agreement in terms of the benefits and everything. It's not the same thing. Yeah, yeah, it's 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 a step above, and we were able. It's to a get much it lower up. bar. Yeah, and I think we probably made a mistake by not negotiating that into the contract. Um, thank you, and I've never negotiated that before, so I, you know, not sure if I was asking it correctly. And then second. Um, you mentioned where you were offering this deal and and part of it, this land has been vacant and unused for several years. Was the reason because it was contaminated? There was just no level of interest because it is only 19 acres, so it is a small parcel. Uh, so there hasn't been any interest in it, and we've solicited people, but you know, not in a formal way, but we've asked people and no interest at all. So uh, with that... And with SpaceX driving around and looking for the best waterfront property, that was ideal for them. So the reason we, we cleaned it, right? The port we did it? clean it, but it was under uh, – we had – from the previous uh, tenant, uh, they, they left it contaminated, so we did receive uh, money so, for that. But the reason we cleaned it was because we had interest. Otherwise, yes. it would have been – is the reason we didn't uh, clean it? A little it bit of both, a little bit of both. We were, we were going to clean it because of the order that we received and waiting for also the insurance money from the previous uh, tenant. Um, and so um, I, I guess I was just concerned over 20 years net zero income um, coming in. And that's based, 
again, based on their actual expenses. So if it comes in under that, then that could change the, the dynamics of that, and it could be less than 20 years. So this is the estimates of their cost to build out the, the infrastructure. And if it does come in below that, then our cost would be less and the payback would be sooner. So, or no credits would be issued, I should say. So back to legal, is there a problem approving something that would, as quoted here, despite the fact that the estimated rate of return does not meet the policy that we set, that there, we can justify it because of the 700 potential jobs, or we can fo not follow our own policy, or th it's okay to do that? It is a board determination, and that's why it's before the board to make that determination. First of all, I'm I'm been very much enjoying my fellow commissioners, and it's it's a real pleasure and honor to be on this commission because everyone's so smart and thinks everything through so thoroughly. From a, a business perspective, this is how I've thought about this deal, um, and not you know is that uh, we as a port. Well, first of all, I'll tell you my bias, which is I'm a huge Star Trek fan. <laughs> 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 So, so the whole idea of, uh, of uh, the Port of Los Angeles and San Pedro and Wilmington being the headquarters for Starfleet in the future is, is pretty exciting to me personally. But putting aside that bias, um, from, uh, both from our own economic strength viewpoint as well as the Port of Los Angeles' economic growth as well as the greater you know, immediate areas, Wilmington, San Pedro, uh, Harbor City, and then the Southland as a whole, and even the country as a whole, you know, those are, from an economic perspective, we drive the economy. And most of the stuff we focus on are the industries and the growth of today. And that's as it should be. Um, you know, we make our money from our, basically from our big uh, container ships coming in and a few other product services as well, but that's primarily where we make our money. And that is as it should be. But we also have to plant the seeds for tomorrow because the industry is already going through massive change. And we have to plant seeds that will improve the value of our assets going forward. And like any company, all companies do that. All, we're not a company, but we, in many ways, act as one. All companies have to do that. Most people, most companies have the burden of investing in the future through research and development costs, which are very expensive. We have the benefit of not having to do that. Instead, the way we do it is by renting land out at a fair rate and then, in this case, giving them the credits that, will, that are covering the cost of reclaiming the land, turning into something valuable. Now, this land was sitting fallow forever and we didn't have a market use for it going forward. So we are putting an asset that has no effective value to us into a pool and partnering with uh, a major agent of change to create value. And we are getting a rent. It just so happens that we are taking that rent and investing it through the mechanism of the lease into improving uh, the land and also the general economy going forward. When I think about the really cool things we're doing about the future uh, for both our local community as well as the value of our assets, it's SpaceX and it's um, Alta C. Those are the two things that we're doing that are very transformative. And I, I really do want to do a, a shout out to the port staff, which has done a great job of figuring this out, um, as well as my fellow commissioners who have been so involved. And then finally, also to our visionary mayor, Eric Garcetti, and our visionary city councilman, um, Mr. Joseph Buscaino, who have really been major drivers of bringing SpaceX and Starfleet to the Port of Los Angeles. And finally, capping the environmental cost is very important, and I'm really glad that you pointed that out, because in a situation like this where we're not expecting to make bundles of money, you want to make sure you mitigate your <clears throat> downside risk. And we have mitigated our downside risk. It's $2.1 million. And moreover, we've thoroughly reviewed the insurance policies and the like um, to make sure that we are protected in case 
anything goes wrong. And just one more thing to add as well. Thank you, Commissioner. Um, you know, at the end of the 30 years, we do have a, a, a piece of property that's been developed by somebody else, and we have some use for it afterwards. The building stay, everything is still in place after 30 years, which is something we don't have today. Is there a cap on the TI credit that goes towards rent abatement? So, uh, as you can see, uh, phase one, our cap is $27 million, and then phase two, it is at $15 million for a total of $42 million. And that's based on the projected rental stream, but that increases and by CPI. That does increase by CPI, but it also takes into account what they think their construction costs are going to be and, and putting in new piles and so forth that are required out there. Uh, so but the cap is a fixed dollar amount. It's not correct. based on the actual rental income for the first 20 years. That's correct. Okay. Is there a cap and floor on the CPI increases? Uh, no. No. It's, so there's no cap on the CPI. Okay. So potentially it is possible. Floor, though. The What's floor? the floor? Oh, yes. Can't yeah, go down. Can't go down. <laughs> to go down. Um, okay, so there is a potential, for instance, depending on, you know, a higher CPI Correct. than normal, that the yep. TI would be much lower yeah. than the actual rent owed for the first 20 years. That is correct. Um, for the dollar amounts on the pricing for land that was in the board report for, like, the wharf land, back land land, how is that determined? Regner, you want to address that? Yeah, we, we utilize uh, a market survey, and uh, that's uh, uh, the baseline for us, and then we negotiate from there. And in this case, uh, um, the, the back land is uh, cheaper than the, the waterfront, of course. Mm -hmm. Okay. There's no comparable land, though, really? We, we use uh, across-the-fence, uh, uh, you know, rent, rent surveys. Okay. Um, and finally, how is the um, future fair market value of the improvements determined? Because presumably most structures have a useful life of less than 50 years, so we're more than halfway through the useful life. Yeah, we used uh, Marshall and Swift on that and uh, looked at the history of uh, the facility they have in Hawthorne. It's very well uh, managed and uh, you know, uh, maintained, and that's what we utilized to uh, figure that out. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. I just wanted to say some final thoughts as I think through this. You know, um, having been in this industry now 28 years, I know that access to space is hard. But it's critical to um, not just our industry but to the nation as a whole. So I, I'm like, check, this is, this is important. Um, one thing we've all been shooting for is bringing high-tech jobs to our towns, to our waterfront, um, it's a huge opportunity, so check. I'm, I'm like, that's great. Uplifting our town, the harbor area, San Pedro, Wilmington, with other businesses that will come with such a development um, is critical. So, again, check, in my mind, from a big-picture perspective. I also say the project solidifies our role as a spaceport. I've talked about that before when we were um, offloading Falcon 9 out of 22nd Street. Pretty exciting. Uh, puts us on the map as a contributor to the exploration of the final frontier that is space. And I think it is an amazing opportunity for all of us to say we are part of it. So I'm very supportive, and I'm excited. So thank you, Wallport staff, SpaceX, everybody, for uh, getting us to this point. And as Commissioner Renwick said, the mayor and our local councilman as well, but you've all done a fabulous job, and, and I'm excited. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I had one more question. You, you talked about the need to, uh, to train a workforce in the future. How do you guys do that? And, uh, you know, yeah, go ahead. Well, so we're going to be doing composite down uh -huh. here. So we hire a bunch of people. We try to figure out what it takes to do it, and we just start training them on how to do it, and they, we just teach it to them. We can learn on the job. Yeah. Well, you know, we're in the middle of uh, developing a new workforce training center here in the Port of L.A., particularly for the existing uh, jobs. Mm -hmm. And it would be interesting to sit down with you guys and talk about maybe being able to float, you know, fold that in in terms of your future needs, mm -hmm. you know. But yeah. thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Very good point, Commissioner. And we'll talk to Avine, who's heading up that project for us, and, and he'll have a discussion with SpaceX. Any further questions? 
If not, may I have a motion to approve staff's recommendation? So moved. Second. Further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? That motion carries. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you everybody for coming. Back to agenda, oh. Yes. You wanna go back to agenda items G? Correct. Okay. Commissioner Renwick, uh, we are going to cover um, the items that were missed earlier in the uh, board meeting. First item, letter F, for reports of the commissioners. Uh, yes, I attended the mayor's uh, state of the city address with my daughter and wife. And uh, item G, board committee reports. Yeah, so we had uh, the ACTA meeting. Um, a couple of uh, important developments. Uh, the first development is that uh, we got an update on our continuing um, uh, partnership with the county on uh, dealing with the homeless issues. And I'm glad to say that they are still that the county is still providing active services uh, to the folks who set up a home on our train tracks, uh, which you know we got to make sure that they're kept safe. And it's we're not just dealing with a you know shuffle them off the land policy, which is I think it's very, very important. So we're all excited about that. Um, and it's, it's been very exciting because we're a trained company. We're not a social service agency. And so the compassion and the meticulousness with which our very small staff has focused on this issue, I think, is, is pretty heartwarming. Um, secondly, uh, it is a very small staff, and ACT is a very strange entity. It's a $120 million company every year, of which... 10 million is operating expenses and 110 million is debt service. So it's a tiny staff, six people, I think, with some outsourced service providers. So we did the annual budget this year. Uh, we are going to be cash flow positive this year. We are going to be cash flow positive next year because the Port of Los Angeles guarantees 20% of the $2 billion worth of debt. We very much care how, public, how, well, how we are. Uh, so we are sticking to our plan to probably not need any additional month funding from the ports till about 2026, and then hopefully by then either um, economic growth or new refinancings will solve any future needs. But that's a, we are keeping our eye on that. And then finally, one of the things when we got involved in um, ACTA, uh, we noticed that they had not um, rebid out any of their contracts for kind of forever. And so we put them on a schedule of rebidding out the contracts, which is very, it's just good policy to rebid out contracts rather than just keep renewing them. Um, that has put a lot of burden on the staff because it's a tiny staff and they, they have expertise on railroads. Uh, they don't have expertise on bidding out contracts, whereas we at the port have huge expertise. You recall a, a pre prior board item from last meeting where there was we had to extend a contract that was because there's just they're, they don't have the expertise and so uh, a motion was passed at the last board meeting to outsource the RFP RFQ process to the Port of Los Angeles uh, which I think is a great idea leverage off our resources here and let the let the ACTA staff do what they're really good at so that's the summary Thank you, Commissioner Renwick. Next item H, the approval of minutes for the regular meeting of April 5th, 2018. Commissioner Prozzi. Is there a motion to approve the uh, minutes? So moved. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Opposed? Okay, motion's passed. Prior to going to uh, item number four on the agenda, we're gonna uh, briefly recess into closed session to uh, discuss items two and three on the posted agenda, and then we will come out and we will take the uh, open session action listed as item four. Thank you.
So the Board of Harbor Commissioners concluded their uh, discussion of items two and three in closed session. They took no reportable action in closed session. We are now out for a public session, open session, to discuss item number four on the posted agenda. Amber. Thank you, Jana. Item number four is a resolution waiving the potential conflict with respect to Gordon Rees Scully Mansukani LLP's representation of Travelers Insurance Company and Colonial Yacht Anchorage. Is there a motion to approve staff's recommendation? No move. Any second? second? Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? That motion carries. Thank you. We'll now recess into closed session to continue with the items posted <laughs> on the posted agenda. Thank you. The board concluded its discussions on closed session. Item number one was not discussed. It was pulled from the agenda. Item two and three, we already reported out. Item four, through uh, the rest of the items, but uh, item four we discussed. Item five through the end of the agenda, 33. Mike DiBernardo is recused and was not in the room for that discussion. Other than that, we took no reportable actions at this point. That concluded closed session. Thank you. I am pleased to adjourn this meeting. Thank you.